In Mozambique, the 15-year civil war claimed a million lives and it became one of the most mined countries in the world. But more than two decades on, the country is now finally free of landmines. The landmine clearance charity, the Halo Trust, says it's removed and destroyed more than 171,000 landmines since 1993. Rural communities are now able to cultivate crops and graze livestock safely, lifting many families out of poverty. Well, for more on this story, we can cross to Pascal Rapiard from uh, Geneva, and he's a spokesperson with the Geneva International Centre for Humanitarian Demining. Welcome to the programme. How difficult a process is this, and how sure can we be that Mozambique has actually managed to remove every mine? Yes, good afternoon. Um, well, the, the, there are a number of uh, different methods and approaches that have been applied in Mozambique, which ensures that they manage to be now mine-free. And what was important in the case of Mozambique is that they actually implemented uh, the most up-to-date uh, methodology when it comes to mine clearance. That is, rather than spending expensive resources in areas which didn't contain any mines, actually they dedicated a lot of efforts on survey, thus making sure that actually clearance assets are allocated where they're needed. And this is one of the reasons which can explain why Mozambique is, uh, is so successful. Now, I mean, um, it is mine-free as per the, the Mine Ban Convention, so they, are, they have completed the clearance obligation under international law. Um, one can never be absolutely sure that there is no single mines left, but what is clear is that the impact of antipersonal mines on the population will be now close to zero, although there are still hundreds and thousands of victims to take care of. The mines were placed in some very rural areas. Um, how did that affect people living in those areas, not just about safety? Yes, yeah, so, well, safety is the first uh, and primary concern, but of course then there is a huge impact on development. And uh, if you just think about, for example, railway, where uh, due to anti-personal mines laid around uh, railway, maintenance was not possible. So they could, couldn't improve their, their communication routes. Uh, if you think also about agriculture, a number of fields were not, could not be used for agricultural purpose due to contamination. If you think also about reconstruction, about access, uh, humanitarian access, but also access for economic actors, for economic developments, all this is actually impeded by, by the contamination. So it has a direct and a more indirect, longer-term uh, impact.